Then next we are going to look at sales variances. So once again, you always start with the actual information. So the actual price multiplied by the actual quantity. And remember, we only change one thing at a time. So keep the quantity the same and just change the price, and that will leave you with the sales price variance. Then if you keep the price the same and you just change the quantity, that will leave you with the sales volume variance. Now, it's important to note when performing these calculations, the sales price variance is always calculated using selling prices. So with the sales price variance, we are comparing the actual price to the standard price. And please note, you are looking at the actual selling price and the standard selling price. So when calculating the sales price variance, you always use selling prices the actual selling price and the standard selling price. Now you need to be careful with the sales volume variance because the sales volume variance can either be calculated using standard selling prices or standard contribution or standard profit. Now, if you are calculating variances so that you can reconcile budgeted sales to actual sales, then you should use selling prices in your calculation. On the other hand, if variances are being calculated to reconcile budgeted profit to actual profit, then you should either use the standard profit per unit or the standard contribution per unit in your calculation. Now please note if absorption costing is used, you are going to use the standard profit per unit and you calculate the standard profit per unit by taking sales and deducting both variable and fixed costs. Then if variable costing is used, you are going to use the standard contribution per unit in your calculations. And you calculate the standard contribution by taking sales and deducting variable costs. Now it's important to note, if the question is silent, you'll see normally the questions are silent. So if the question is silent, you can assume that we are calculating variances in order to reconcile profits, which means if variances are being calculated in order to reconcile profits, so in order to reconcile the budgeted profit to the actual profit, then you need to check whether absorption costing is used or variable costing is used. If absorption costing is used, you are going to use the standard profit per unit in your calculations, and if variable costing is used, you're going to use the standard contribution per unit in your calculations. All right, so I'll go through that in a bit more detail when we look at the lecture example. Then, please note, if the company sells more than one product, then the sales volume variance can be split into a mix and quantity variance. So we've already looked at the calculation of the sales volume variance, we know that we compare the standard price multiplied by the actual quantity to the standard price multiplied by the standard quantity. We keep the price the same. The only thing that we change is the quantity, and that leaves us with the volume variance. That ties into the framework just above. That's how we calculate that volume variance. So it's important to note, if you are going to split the volume variance into a mix and quantity variance, there's only one new calculation. And all we do is we repeat this, the standard price multiplied by the actual quantity, you repeat that. And the only difference between these two is this is the actual quantity in the actual mix, and this is the actual quantity in the standard mix. So these are identical, except this is in the actual mix and this is in the standard mix. So that leaves you with a mix variance. And then finally, the balance is the quantity variance. All right, we'll look at that also with a lecture example now. Then for the journal entries, it's important to note that sales are always recorded in the accounting records at actual amounts. Sales variances are not recorded in the accounting records. So if you have to record the actual sales in the accounting records, you are going to debit either debtors or bank, depending on whether the sale is on, um, for cash or on credit, and you're going to credit sales. 
And this is always with the actual amount because we don't record sales variances in the accounting records. All right, let's go and have a look at the lecture example. The following information relates to Webster Pty Limited. The standard cost and selling price per unit is as follows. All right, so you can see Webster Pty Limited sells two different products, product X and product Y. You've been given the various different standard costs and also the standard selling price per unit. And we have the budgeted sales in units. Absorption costing is used. And then you have the actual information. So for both products, you've been given the actual sales in rands and also the actual sales in units. All right, now in part one of the required, we are going to calculate the sales price and volume variance. Now, once again, I don't want you to study formulas. I want you to follow a logical approach. So how are we going to calculate the sales price and volume variance? Remember, we always start with the actual information. So the actual price multiplied by the actual quantity. Then we change one thing at a time. So I change the price and I keep the quantity exactly the same. That is going to give us the sales price variance. Then you keep the price the same and you just change the quantity and that is going to give us the volume variance. Now remember, when calculating the price variance, we always use selling prices. We compare the actual selling price per unit to the standard selling price per unit. You always use selling prices. Then remember with the volume variance, you can either use selling prices, standard contribution, or standard profit. Now, if we are trying to reconcile budgeted sales to actual sales, we should use selling prices. If we are trying to reconcile budgeted profit to actual profit, we then need to determine whether absorption costing or variable costing is used. If absorption costing is used, we will use standard profit, whereas if variable costing is used, we will use standard contribution in our calculations. Now, guys, this question is silent. We are not told what the variances are being calculated for. We don't know if we are trying to reconcile budgeted sales to actual sales, or are we trying to reconcile budgeted profit to actual profit. So you'll remember I said to you, if the question is silent, you can assume that the variances are being calculated to reconcile profits. So we are either going to use standard profit or standard contribution in our calculations, because we are assuming that the variances are being calculated to reconcile budgeted profit to actual profit. Now, in this example, you were specifically told that absorption costing is used, which means the standard price in the calculation of your volume variance is going to be the standard profit per unit, which you calculate by taking the selling price per unit, you deduct the variable cost per unit, and you also deduct fixed costs. All right. So over here, because absorption costing is being used, this SP, the standard price, is going to be the standard profit per unit. All right, when we calculate that volume variance. Okay, so let's have a look at the calculations. So there's the formula for your sales price variance. So once again, guys, you don't need to write out the formula again. You've already written out the framework for the formula on the previous page. So just bring this down. That's how we calculate the price variance. Don't write it out again. So first we need the actual price multiplied by the actual quantity. So for both products, you were given that information. That's the actual sales in total. So that is the actual price multiplied by the actual quantity. Then we need the standard price. And remember, we are calculating the price variance. So the standard price is going to be the standard selling price per unit. So for each product, there is your standard selling price per unit. And then for the actual quantity, they actually sold 50,000 units of product X and 12,000 units of product Y. All right, so that's where all of those amounts come from. 
you can just bring those down. Then, let's discuss whether these variances are favorable or unfavorable. For product X, so you can see I've just broken this down into more detail so that we can analyze this variance correctly. So the actual price multiplied by the actual quantity in total is 29 million. And if you look at the breakdown, we know that the actual quantity is 50,000 units. So that means the actual price must have been 580 rand per unit. So the actual selling price is 580 rand per unit. The standard selling price is 588 rand per unit. So the actual selling price was less than the standard selling price, and this variance is therefore unfavorable. Then if we look at product Y, the same logic applies. I've broken this down further just so that we can analyze the variance. So we know that the total actual price multiplied by the actual quantity is 9.12 million rand. And we know that the actual quantity is 12,000 units. So if the actual quantity is 12,000 units, the actual selling price per unit must have been 760 rand. So you can multiply this out and you'll see it comes back to that total. So the actual quantity is exactly the same because we are calculating the price variance. So we are comparing the actual selling price per unit to the standard selling price per unit. And because the actual selling price is higher than the standard selling price, this variance is favorable. Then if we look at the calculation of the volume variance, please remember with the volume variance, the question was silent. We don't know if we are calculating variances to reconcile sales or to reconcile profits. So we assume that we are calculating variances to reconcile profits. Further, we also know that absorption costing is being used, which means the sales volume variance should be calculated using standard profit. So we can look at the upfront calculations over here and calculate the standard profit per unit. Please remember, guys, it's the selling price per unit minus the variable costs per unit minus the fixed costs per unit. That will give you the standard profit. So it's a simple calculation because you have the standard selling price per unit and you also have the total cost, which includes both variable and fixed costs. So if you take the standard selling price per unit and you deduct the total costs, that will leave you with the standard profit per unit. Now remember, this variance is going to start where the last variance ended. So you can just bring this information down. The standard price multiplied by the actual quantity and the standard price multiplied by the actual quantity. But just be careful. Never carry amounts forward without first thinking about it. This price variance was calculated using the standard selling price per unit. The volume variance is going to be calculated using standard profit. So when you carry this down, you can't carry down the standard selling prices. You must replace the selling price with the standard profit. All right, so it's the standard profit per unit for each product multiplied by the actual quantity. And then we finish this off with the standard price multiplied by the standard quantity. So the standard price is the standard profit per unit. And the standard quantity is obviously the budgeted quantity. They budgeted to sell 45,000 units of product X and 15,000 units of product Y. So that's your budgeted sales. That is the standard quantity. Now this is extremely important, guys. When you are calculating the sales variances, you don't flex to actual production. You'll remember when we were looking at all of the production cost variances, our material variances, our labor variances, our overhead variances, we always flex this to actual production. Think about this logically. We are not calculating production cost variances now. We are calculating sales variances, which has to do with the number of units that you sell. This has got nothing to do with the number of units that were produced. So don't flex to actual production. When you are calculating your sales variances, you are just comparing the actual quantity sold to the budgeted quantity. You don't flex to actual production. So for product X, they actually sold 50,000 units. They wanted to sell 45,000 units according to the budget. So because they actually sold more than what they budgeted to sell, this variance is favorable. 
Then for product Y, they actually sold 12,000 units. According to the budget, they should have sold 15,000 units. So because they actually sold less than what they should have, this variance is unfavorable. All right. Then, in part two, we now need to calculate the sales mix and quantity variances. So we saw that the company sells two different products, product X and product Y. So that means the total sales volume variance can be split into a mix and quantity variance. So how are we going to perform this calculation? Go back to your framework over here. You just repeat this. Standard price times actual quantity. And we followed exactly the same logic with all previous variance calculations. And now the only difference between these two is this is the actual quantity in the actual mix. And this is the actual quantity in the standard mix. Apart from that, they are exactly the same. So this is going to leave me with a mix variance. And this leaves me with a quantity variance. All right. And remember, the sum of the mix variance and the quantity variance is going to give you the volume variance. So please note, when we are performing all of these calculations over here, this SP, because we are using absorption costing, the SP should be the standard profit per unit. We are looking at the volume variance calculations. We are just splitting the volume variance down into more detail. We are calculating a mix and a quantity variance. But it's the volume variance. So you don't use the selling price. We are using the standard profit per unit in these calculations. Now, guys, to save time, it's important to note we have already performed that calculation and we have also already performed that calculation because we did already calculate the sales volume variance in total. So we already have those amounts. This is the only new calculation that we are looking at performing. Right. Right, so for the mixed variance, it's the standard profit per unit multiplied by the actual quantity in the actual mix and the standard profit per unit multiplied by the actual quantity in the standard mix. So we are comparing the actual mix to the standard mix and that gives us a mix variance. So up front, we are going to need to perform a few calculations. First, guys, this is the actual quantity in the actual mix. If you go back to the actual information provided, they actually sold 50,000 units of product X and 12,000 units of product Y. So that is the actual quantity. If you add those together, in total, you get 62,000 units. So that is the actual quantity in the actual mix. We now need to take this actual quantity over here and put it into the standard mix. So if you go back to the standard information, budgeted sales are 45,000 units of product X and 15,000 units of product Y. So that gives us a total of 60,000 units. All right. So here's your actual quantity in the actual mix. That's what they actually sold. 50,000 units of product X and 12,000 units of product Y. We now need to take that actual quantity of 62,000 units and we need to put it into the standard mix. So first we need to calculate what the standard mix is. So in total they budgeted to sell 60,000 units of both product X and Y. 45,000 units should have been product X and 15,000 units should have been product Y. So that means 75% of all units sold should have been product X and 25% should have been product Y. So just take this actual quantity and multiply by 75% and by 25%. So that you've taken the actual quantity of 62,000 units and you've put that into the standard mix. Right. So, remember, this standard price over here is the standard profit per unit. So that's the standard profit per unit for product X and for product Y. We already looked at that calculation. We are now just comparing the actual quantity in the actual mix to the actual quantity in the standard mix. 
and you can bring the information down from the calculation above. There's the actual quantity in the actual mix, and there's the actual quantity in the standard mix, and that's for product X. For product Y, there's the actual quantity in the actual mix, and there's the actual quantity in the standard mix. All right, so let's discuss whether these variances are favorable or unfavorable. For product X, you can see that they should have sold 46,500 units. They actually sold 50,000 units. So because they sold more than what they should have, this variance is favorable. For product Y, they should have sold 15,500 units. They actually sold 12,000 units. Because they actually sold less than what they should have, this variance is unfavorable. Then overall, the sales mix variance is unfavorable. And that's because you can see product X has a lower standard profit per unit and product Y has a higher standard profit per unit. And they actually sold more of product X and less of product Y. So because they are selling more of the product with a lower standard profit per unit, the overall mix variance is unfavorable. Or another way that you can look at this is they are selling less of the product with a higher standard profit per unit, and that's why the overall mix variance is unfavorable. Then we can calculate the sales quantity variance. So this variance starts where the last variance ended. So just bring this information down, save yourself time. And we are comparing this to the standard profit per unit multiplied by the standard quantity or the budgeted sales volume. And remember, we don't flex to actual production. So the standard profit per unit for product X is 98 Rand and for product Y it's 126 Rand. Then your standard quantity, that is your budgeted sales volume, is 45,000 units for product X and 15,000 units for product Y. All right, so for product X, they should have sold 45,000 units. They actually sold 46,500 units. So because the actual sales is higher than the standard quantity, that variance is favorable. Then for product Y, they should have sold 15,000 units. They actually sold 15,500 units. So once again, actual sales is higher than the standard quantity or higher than the budgeted sales quantity. So that variance is favorable. All right, then to calculate the sales volume variance, you just add together the mix and the quantity variance that we just calculated. And you'll see that this volume variance ties in to the volume variance that we calculated previously. All right, then lastly, we need to prepare the journal entries for sales. Now remember, we always record sales in the accounting records at their actual amounts. The sales variances are not recorded in the accounting records. So we are going to debit either debtors or bank and we are going to credit sales with the actual sales amount. So this information comes directly from the question. You were given the actual sales amount for product X and also for product Y. So just record the actual sales in your accounting records. You don't record the sales variances in your accounting records. Now, how would these calculations change if variable costing is used instead of absorption costing? The only difference, guys, is going to be when you are calculating the sales volume variance, the sales mix variance, and the sales quantity variance. Instead of using the standard profit per unit, you are now going to use the standard contribution per unit. So remember, we calculated the standard profit per unit by taking the standard selling price per unit and deducting the standard costs, the total standard costs, the variable and the fixed costs. Now, if we are working with standard contribution per unit, you are going to take the standard selling price per unit and you are only going to deduct the standard variable costs per unit. So don't deduct the fixed costs. And that will give you the standard contribution per unit for each product. 
So when you calculate the cell's volume variance, the mix variance, and the cell's quantity variances, this is what you will use as the SP in your calculations. You'll be using the standard contribution per unit instead of the standard profit per unit.